My name is Paul, and welcome back to Paul's Railroad. I know I have been missing in action for the last two, maybe three weeks, but I have been busy, I promise. I have actually uh, created five videos that I'll be uploading here very, very shortly. Uh, they're going to be uploaded uh, one day after another for the next five days. Um, in these videos, I'm not going to be doing any painting or weathering or what we've been seeing in the past. I've decided to try something a little different. Uh, I'm going to consider it like a little mini-series, if you will. Um, I started uh, Paul's Railroad about eight months ago. And as most of you know, uh, I started this channel with the hopes of showing you how to do or how to create a model railroad as inexpensive as possible. And the big uh, way I'm able to do that is uh, using a 3D printer and designing my own structures and 3D printing them. And since the very beginning, I have gotten questions left and right about how I design, what program I'm using, just, you know, the whole gamut of questions that you can imagine of how I'm doing what I'm doing. And to be quite honest with you, I have been somewhat hesitant uh, to share that with you all, only because I do sell my files over on uh, cults3d.com, um, and I was afraid that I would lose some money. Now, I don't make a lot of money doing this. I don't sell my files for very much money to begin with, but uh, an example, recently I have earned enough money that I'm able to buy a static grass applicator, which, as we all know, can be somewhat expensive, which is, you know, great. I mean, I'm able to have something now that doesn't really come out of my pocket or my family's pocket, let's say. Um, but then I started thinking, you know, I created this channel uh, to share my hobby, to share my passion, to share my art with the hopes of, you know, teaching somebody who's just getting started how to do something easily, or maybe showing a veteran who's been doing this for so many years longer than I have a different way of doing something, or at the very least, maybe inspiring you to get out and get started in this hobby. So with that thought, I, I have to share everything with you guys. I can't be stingy. Um, but that brings me to another point, though. Since uh, I might lose a little bit of sales that way, which is not a big deal, I have recently partnered with Amazon, which is pretty cool. I am uh, with their uh, affiliate or associate program. And uh, what that means is, um, well, for, for example, we're going to talk about this here in a minute. I have this scale ruler that I bought off of Amazon. And I'll have a link in my description for this ruler and for a lot of other things that I use for this hobby. And if you click on my link and you go to Amazon and you were to buy this ruler, I get a percentage of the sale which is awesome and the best part is it doesn't cost you anything extra it does not increase the price of any of these items at all i just get a little kickback from amazon for getting you to amazon to purchase something and the best part um even better than all of that let's say you click this link and you go look at this and you're like yeah i don't want that right now but while i'm here i'm gonna go buy some sheets that my wife has been wanting or some towels or some more track or, or a turnout guess what i sent you the amazon I still get a little bit of that, a uh, little percentage of that sale, which only is only going to help me out, help out this channel, help me continue to grow. So that being said, guys, if you do go shopping on Amazon, I have a link on my homepage of YouTube on my introduction video, actually to this ruler. If you think about it, click on that little hyperlink, go to Amazon, shop to your heart's content, and it helps me out. And like I said, it doesn't cost you anything extra, just a little bit of your time, and I would really appreciate it. So, enough with the uh, self-gratuitous advertising. What this next uh, little set of videos is going to be is I'm going to show you how I come up with a concept and 3D design a model. Um, I use Fusion 360, which uh, as of right now is still free for personal use license. So go ahead and download that if you want to follow along with me. The next three videos after this video are going to be actual modeling videos in Fusion 360. And I go at a decent pace, but I explain every step that I go. So you can just, you know, watch a little bit of it, pause the video, work on, uh, on your own uh, file, come back, you can follow along very easily with me. Um, the structure that I'm starting with is a very, very simple uh, shed. Nothing too crazy. I'm doing that just so you guys can get the basics of how to work with the interface in Fusion 360. Um, 
that brings me to uh, yet another point. If you guys get through these videos and you really like them, you enjoy them, and you want to see more, you got to let me know because that's the only way I know what kind of content to give to you folks. Um, if you like them, we're going to go on. I have plans to do uh, tunnel portals. We can do different kinds of structures like um, like the farmhouses with siding, downtown buildings with brickwork, even uh, do some rolling stock if you guys want to see some of that. But you've got to really, really have to let me know. But this video, we're going to start with where do I get my ideas? And where do we go from there? Well, the ideas are simple. They're all around us. If you're sitting at home watching this video, you're sitting in your idea. Um, if you have a shed like I have a shed, most of us do, go out and take measurements of that shed. Take measurements of your home. Uh, take pictures of your downtown if you have a small downtown like I have that has really old-fashioned buildings. Or just get on Google. I mean, I uh, hate to say it, but a lot of the kit manufacturers, I'm not going to say which ones, if you go to their websites, you can download multiple pictures of their buildings, and they have, some of them even give you the dimensions of the footprint. So that's a really good place to start. Um, but take a tape measure with you uh, and measure your doors, measure your ceiling heights, and just get to, to know different sizes of things. Um, if you don't want to do that, again, go to Google, look up standard door heights, standard window sizes, you know, et cetera, et cetera, and you can figure it out. Um, but I, I will always suggest that you don't just go straight to a computer and start designing. I still, even though I've been designing for many years now, I still start with a pen, pencil and paper, and I get all my dimensions written down. They're not perfect. They can change, but at least I have a starting point. So with that being said, let me move the camera over here, and I'll show you how I start on the pad of paper, okay? All right. After you decide what you're going to design, like I said before, I start with uh, paper and pencil and paper. And uh, this is my very rough draft. It is not to scale in any way, shape, or form, but it just gives me a starting point to get my dimensions down. As you can see up here, this is just our footprint of our shed, and I want it to be 12 feet by 12 feet. And this is a side view of one of the side walls. Again, it's going to be 12 feet wide. It's going to be seven and a half feet tall to the side wall that goes all the way around the shed to, to make the square. But to the peak, it's going to be 11 and a half feet. Now, once you get those kind of dimensions down, you need to convert those to end scale. And to be uh, perfectly honest with you, you should start using the metric system uh, if you're going to start getting into 3D modeling and using a 3D printer. Almost everything out there is done with metric system, and it actually is much easier. At least to me, it's much easier using, um, you know, uh, 1.5 centimeter instead of or instead of 11 sixteenths. I don't like fractions at all. Anyhow, in order to transpose your sizes to an end scale size, there are several different ways you can do that. Uh, there are um, programs on the computer, actually just I think if you do Google searches, uh, little boxes show up where you can put in your dimensions and put in end scale and it'll give it to you uh, in an end scale dimension. Uh, there are apps, I actually have an app on my phone um, that I use once in a while. I would show it to you, but I'm using my phone to record this right now, so that's not possible. But what I use mostly, and I'm going to shamelessly plug this because I think it's the greatest tool that you will ever buy. I use this ruler. Let me turn around so you can see what it is. If you don't have one of these, Deluxe Model or Railroad Reference Rule, go out and get one. Get one of these before you buy any other tool to work with. Even if you're not 3D modeling or 3D designing, if you are building a railroad, you still should have one of these because it will make your building experience much more easy and much more pleasurable and much more accurate. This ruler has scale for HO, has scale for O scale, and for us, it has N scale on this side, and it even has a little metric ruler here, and it also has all those things for decimals and it has your standard 64 so here, so if you want to really, you know, work hard, you can use those for me, I guess. It's got drill bit sizes. I don't use any of those. I Right now, all I use print, 
predominantly is the end scale ruler. And how I do this is I use two rulers. I have our scale ruler and I just have a standard ruler that is metric on one side. And for example, let's say I know, which we know because we wrote them down, our base is 12 foot by 12 feet. So what I do is I connect it to my end scale ruler. Let me see if I can zoom in here so you can see a little bit better. And I will go and find 12 feet on there. I will throw my other ruler up here, kind of line it up to 12 feet. And uh, we know that that is approximately 2.4 centimeters. So there is our one dimension. And since this is a simple square, we have all of our dimensions there for our footprint. And then again, you can do the same for everything. As you can see, right here I have everything written out for you if you just want to copy all this down. Our base is, well, actually you're missing some of it here. Hold on just a second. There we go. Um, standard door heights, six and a half feet by three feet, which equates to 1.3 centimeters by seven millimeters. Make sure you catch that. Uh, of course, our base I already says 12 feet by 12 feet, which is 2.4 by 2.4 centimeters. Our walls all the way around the base, our wall heights are going to be seven and a half feet high, which is 1.5 centimeters. And our peak from this line here, from this wall up to this peak, is an additional 8.5 millimeters. Don't make the mistake I did the first time I designed this and put in 8.5 centimeters. That looks really wrong. Uh, again, now our overhaul height, including the peak, is 11 and a half feet, which is 2.35 centimeters. Um, we are going to be doing a tongue and groove type siding on these walls. And I have those at uh, one foot wide, which is two millimeters wide. So just a little sneak peek here. When you get done, this is what we're going to be left with. Okay, get that out of here. You don't see that no more. Yeah. Anyways, that's it. I mean, you can do this. You can go down and, like I said, take some measurements of, of any object. I mean, not, I'm not talking about just structures, but let's say, uh, let's say you bought a resin printer and you want to start doing um, air conditioning units for the tops of your roofs or your buildings that you already have. Well, guess what? If you have access to one, take some measurements of it and you can create it. If not, again, Google search it. So many things we can do now with these printers. Um, I don't think I have anything else for this video right now. As always, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. It really does help with YouTube pushing my videos to the top of the list from people who are doing searching for uh, videos of this nature. I really appreciate it. And again, I hope you really enjoy this little mini-series I'm doing. And until next time, take care.